Casting Call is brought to you by Guam Windward Memorial, because in the real world, you don't always get an extra life. Welcome back, everybody, to the third episode of the Laddie Esports podcast, The Casting Call. Um, just as a reminder for everybody who's just joining us for this podcast, we uh, this podcast is specifically designed to uh, interview our local streamers on Guam, see how they're, you know, doing in their streaming career, as I would say. And then at the same time, you know, deep in, dive a little bit deep into the person that they are and see how they're coping with that. You know, how are they able to um, handle those struggles that they're uh, going through as a streamer? So uh, with us today, we actually have a very special guest. Um, if you don't mind, can you please introduce yourself, special guest? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Andrea, and I'm known as Drea Kupo on Twitch. Uh, I usually stream League of Legends and sometimes Among Us and other variety games, and I'm happy to be here. Awesome. And also join uh, together with me as my co-host, back at it again, we have our man, most definite, most... Hey, what's up, guys? I'm glad to be back. The uh, the crew over here at Laddie, uh, I guess they liked me enough the first time around to bring me back. I'm happy to be back uh, giving um, the Guam streamers more light, more attention, and um, some well-deserved uh, uh, airtime. As as much as they've been putting on streaming, it's nice to get them you know, in the booth uh, in a private conversation like this to pick their brain apart about lots of other things, and we find a lot of interesting topics. So happy to be here again. Awesome. And I'm so glad that you're here as well. I'm glad that everybody's here. Um, uh, one thing I totally forgot to mention, uh, this podcast is also brought to you by Guam Winmer Memorial. Be sure to check them out. Thank you for sponsoring us. Uh, so, again, it's just going to be going into the questions, Drea. Um, I actually just wanted to, we let's go start off with, you know, how everything just kind of started out for you with gaming. And I actually want to go see how your gaming history kind of started. You know, what's your personal background like with um just, uh, you know, starting it all. Sure. Uh, okay, so I was born into a, I guess, four other sisters, including myself. I'm being the third one. And wow. I was influenced by um, a lot of my male cousins who are actually older than me, a lot older than me. And they would play, like, Final Fantasy, Tekken, Soul Calibur, Guilty Gear, um... And they were really into anime as well. And, you know, I looked up to them a lot for inspiration. And they heavily influenced me to enjoy gaming as well. And when once I came home and, you know, came from family parties, for example, from them, uh, just from watching them, I'd come home wanting to play on my older sister's PS1. But, you know, my older sister's kind of stingy with that stuff. <laughs> so her tactic <laughs> with me... Uh, in playing like Final Fantasy 7 or 8 is, hey, uh, if you get a dollar from mom and dad, you could play my PS1. So obviously, <laughs> I'm going to go to my parents wow. and ask for one dollar <laughs> and they give it to me and I'd play her PS1. And also to include, I have to get another dollar in order to save, you know, on the memory card, uh, my progress. Oh, so two dollars just to play a day. On like Final Fantasy seven, eight, and nine. Oh. Uh, so, so you got the that, full that's... arcade experience at home. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's yeah, what I was gonna say. <laughs> basically, yeah. And uh, I started playing like RPG games first, like Legend of Lagaya, Legend of Mana, uh, and then more Final Fantasy games, and then a little bit of Golden Sun, and then I transitioned Ooh. to fighting games like Tekken, Soul Calibur and Guilty Gear. Uh, and those were those types of games were uh, pretty much mainly what I used to play when I was like maybe from elementary school to uh, my first year in college. And then my first year in college, I was introduced to League of Legends. Uh, mm -hmm. Like a lot of my high school friends, uh, when I was a senior, they'd be like, hey, Drea, we should play League together. And I'm like, at that time I was already working as a senior. And I was like, oh. no, I don't have time for games. I have a life too, you know? <laughs> and, um, but uh, the next thing I know it, a year later, I've, I've developed this hobby of playing League of Legends all day, 
maybe eight hours a day playing Dang. with friends, uh, a, going to net every day. It's like a full time job. That, <laughs> yeah, I loved it so much, and I still love it. You know, it's just a lot different compared、uh, to what it was before. And I think when I started, it was like pre season three,、Whoa. and that's when Jinx came out.、Okay. Yeah, it was、mm. that time, and I. Always go to net after work, and then after always being at net a year ish later, I started working there as well.、Oh. And so after my shifts at Netopia, you know, I'd play games. I play <laughs> games there the whole day until like twelve a.m. and come home. And you know, my parents are like the typical older Filipino parents. They're like, "Where have you been? You know, are you doing drugs?" What are you doing? And I'm like, Mom, Dad, I'm like, I'm playing games.、I'm、like, oh, are you lying?、And、I'm like, no, I'm really playing games. You know that's bad for your eyes, right? I'm like, yeah, that's why I wear glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where it,、uh, the whole gaming aspect started stems from.、Uh, from my life when I was like younger in elementary school, just like a family family influence, and then it led to an actual hobby that I enjoy. And then、uh, bringing it to my work, and then after work I'd play games all day, every day, and then yeah. And then from there,、um, how I got into streaming was simple, and it was due to boredom and wanting to learn more about streaming in general,、uh -huh. especially working at net for maybe a couple months、uh, during like the down times at work. I like watch streams, maybe support my friends as well when they stream, and they made it look super fun. Okay. And I wanted to be able to watch and show my friends my league plays as well. Okay.、Uh, that's how I got into streaming, and then after that, I was brought into the light of Twitch because of a couple Facebook groups I was in.、Uh, oh. Do you know, do you know those Facebook groups they have online for any topic? You could just join that group. For example, like an anime club or like a, a keto diet group. Oh,、uh, okay. So yeah. So、uh, I joined one at that time. I think it was in twenty fifteen.、Uh, I don't regret it, but the group was called League of Honeys.、Uh, <laughs> <it> had, <laughs> I didn't make up the name of that group. K. I just joined because、uh, the interest there was heavily on League of Legends and streaming, and it had like fifty k followers. And I had mutual friends that were in that group, so I was like, why not? So I joined that group. And I met amazing people. I made a lot of friends, and also learned more about Twitch. People would normally post their Twitch links and tell everyone what they'll be playing. For example, Challenger Rengar Smurf climbing from silver to diamond, or like best Tom Kench support. Or sometimes they would like post games outside of League, and it would be like best best Xiaoyu in the West. So obviously, <laughs> when you click on these things,、uh, I. I'd want to learn more from their perspective,、ah, and、okay. it also made me, th yeah, and it made me think to myself, like, wow, so many people have these great passions to showcase their gameplay, and are willing to meet and chat with friends and new people on Twitch. This honestly sounds so much fun, and maybe one day I'll get into it if I move out and if I had a PC. Nice.、Uh, yeah, and then fast forward two years later. Uh, 2018, I think.、Uh, after I graduated、uh, UOG, I started my job, and then I was able to save enough money and move out and、uh, build my own PC. And so the first thing I did was set up my stream at my new place, and it had so much better quality of a stream compared to when I first actually tried to. I believe when I first. Tried streaming. It was when I was still just going to Netopia casually.、Uh, I'd go there with my friends and tried to stream from there. But the webcam was so scuffed, the mic was muffled, and all that could be seen was 240p League of Legends gameplay. Damn. So now that yeah, that's like、and、that、so、tiny screen. That, <laughs> mm -hmm, for sure. And like I remember、uh, before I talk about like. Like how I transitioned to like a better stream.、Uh, a lot of my friends that would stop by my first stream ever, they'd be like, "Jay, I can't see anything. Th is this a PowerPoint?" Oh yeah.、Like, uh, yeah. So I'm like, "Oh, okay. I guess、uh, I'll stream when I have a better PC or setup." And then, 
two years later, I finally had that set up. And that's when I finally started streaming or got more into streaming seriously was in 2018. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> Uh, that's yeah, that's quite a story. Um, you know, so Drea, uh, you have a long, you have a long, like a long history of streaming. Um, I I wanted to uh, touch up on a couple of things. Um, it's a little obvious for us because you know when you mentioned Final Fantasy and 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 um, your involvement with it, it's obvious to us why your name is Drea Kupo because you know, we get the reference. Yeah. But you want to share, I guess, the inspiration. Um, I guess the inspiration behind your your username, how Drea Kupo came about, and also just touch up on like how the rise of from zero, and you just recently hit two thousand followers, which is a huge, huge accomplishment. So, um, you. you know, just t take me, uh, take us through the journey of, of just you know, I guess streaming, um, uh, how your stream has grown for, in viewer and 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 attendance uh, as opposed to when you started. Okay, uh, so my name Drea Kupo. My name is my real name is Andrea. So mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of my friends and close and my family members call me Drea. So Drea and then Kupo is what is said after. Uh, so there's this like creature in Final Fantasy, which is an RPG game, and these creatures basically save your progress in the game. And I mm -hmm. thought they were super cute. They were really tiny with like a red ball floating top of their head with small wings. And when they ask you to save, they'd be like, would you like to save your progress, Koopo? I'm like, what the heck is Koopo? I was like seven years old when I first saw this. And I'm like, okay, sure. And then select a memory slot, Koopo. Uh, there's the Koopo again. <laughs> so basically, this Koopo, the word Koopo is almost like a period for them where they have to say after every like sentence, which mm -hmm. I thought was super cute. And I just fell in love with Moogles as well. And I remember, I think in Final Fantasy IX, that's where like Moogles were more, I guess, specified. And they had their own type of um, short story in that game. And there was one Eidolon or a summoner. And the summoners are those creatures you see main characters summon, such as like Ifrit, Bahama, and yeah. Ashiva. Mm -hmm. So in Final Fantasy IX, there was a character named Aiko, and she had a mog or moogle named Medine. And oh. Medine, um, she's an Eidolon, but was disguised as a moogle named Mog. And she basically grew up with Aiko, and Aiko was like an orphan. And then when Aiko had this fight with, I believe it was Kuja, who's the antagonist in Final Fantasy IX, uh, Medine basically transformed herself to become an Eidolon so she could protect Aiko. And that's where the whole inspiration for my name, Drea Kupo, came from, Moogles and Final Fantasy IX. And oh. so my my viewership, I, I think a lot of it came from just uh, interacting on Twitter, uh, on those Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. on sometimes instagram and when i did start streaming i would advertise my stream uh right after a game would end of league of legends mm. so sometimes i'd encounter like people that were nice and obviously the trolls and <laughs> yeah uh, i made a lot of yeah uh and a lot of the times um people that would show up randomly to my streams they would come from twitter most of the time and hmm. the Facebook, the Facebook groups that I were I was in, and honestly, it's I'm still mind blown by, I guess looking at it at an outsider's perspective of my journey of having no viewers to what I have now. I don't really pay close attention to the numbers of viewers, but I'm just mind blown when mind blown when I do see it because I I never imagined I would reach this much, you know. I just started streaming just so my friends could see my gameplay and maybe I could, this is a way for me to uh, keep my friends updated with my life and with theirs as well. Um, and that's basically it. Wow. Oh, wow, dude, that was, it, it was definitely a lot. Uh, definitely, I, I really appreciate the backstory. Right, um, especially going from your name and then definitely establishing uh the 
the growth, right? Of how you just, it's kind of like just making friends, right? You were just making friends, like all the, throughout all these groups. And then eventually, like, you know, they, they wanted to show some love, like, hey, like, oh, hey, you stream. Oh, cool. I'll come by kind of thing. Right. And some of them, like you said, right. They, they stay, some of them like just came for a bit, but then there are people who actually stayed. And I think that you really, um, uh, can I just ask? I have you made like some actual like uh like close friends from that in in that sort of sense from just streaming? Yes, I actually did. Um, I believe this was a while. I don't re exactly remember when, but I was streaming League and I had someone raid me, mm -hmm. and she brought like thirty viewers to my channel, and I was like so mm -hmm. shocked and nervous. You know, I was like, oh my god. But I don't, I'm so sorry, I don't know what to say, like, I, thank you. And then I guess people like my, my attitude and personality, that they just talked to me the entire, through the entirety of that stream. Um, and they were, I still remember, like, there were four of them that stayed from then until now. And one of them is actually one of my mods. Wow. Um, yeah, I made really great friendships through uh, encounters like that and experiences with different type of streamers um where we we i guess grew this relationship with each other and we wanted to meet each other at twitchcon last year mm -hmm. and i was able to meet those people as well and it was amazing it was it was new it was my first time traveling to the states and traveling alone uh and i was just really happy to actually meet them in person and talk to them like how we would normally on Discord or on Twitch chat. Nice. Yeah, yeah Dre, uh, TwitchCon is, I wanted to talk about that a little bit, but before we get into the TwitchCon, um, because uh, in order to even like attend a TwitchCon, you had to have established some uh, base here. And I know Guam um, has a lot of uh, people who have been streaming for quite a while. I want yeah. to say you're one of the people who have also been streaming for quite a while. Ark is on the same boat who've been streaming for quite a while, but definitely 2020 has seen a boom. Every other week, someone else is starting a new stream, someone on Guam especially, someone's starting a new stream, someone's trying to push for affiliate. Um, for someone like you, Drea, who's been you know streaming as long as you have, uh, what is that like for you to see, to witness like a lot more people from your, your home island really getting into streaming not only are they getting into streaming but are they're 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 trying to be as active as ever um uh from someone who's been doing it for as long as you have what is your take on that mm, let's see i'm really glad to see people like promote their streams on instagram especially people that i follow and uh, on twitter i've been seeing a big number of guam streamers also promoting their new streams or first time streaming uh it really makes me happy because it gives us Guam exposure to the Twitch community and to the world, right? Like international attention, uh, stateside attention to Guam. Uh, and I feel like that's something that we, Guam, will benefit from because, you know, we're so small. Not many people recognize us because we're so small. Uh, and so with these streamers starting off with their own streams, this will give us, like, this will give us a door for people who aren't aren't knowledgeable of Guam or don't know about Guam at all. Mm -hmm. Like somewhat a glimpse of how the people are. Um, you know, people that aren't exposed to, or not exposed to, but they don't know what Guam is. They have this, what's it called? This idea of what we are. Like, you know, oh, don't you guys wear grass, grass skirts? Or do you, <laughs> you guys speak English? Yeah. Do you guys have heard... Taco Bell? For real, <laughs> I heard for that real. About sometimes, yeah. Yeah. And like, even um, when I talk about where I'm from on Guam on my streams, most of the time, um, my the people on chat don't know what Guam is. That's mm -hmm. why I feel like, I feel really grateful. And I just feel so happy that there's more people that are starting to stream, especially from our region of the world. Yeah. Not just I, Guam, but even like Saipan <laughs> too. Yeah. Oh, so, so I won't. No, yeah, no, you're fine. I wanted to follow up that question because, like, when you were getting into it, you kind of took the plunge to TwitchCon, um, you know, as as a as one of the original or or one of the uh, longtime Guam streamers. Um, 
is this something is that an experience that you feel like a lot of the guam people need to be attend and i guess need to attend how was that experience for you what was your biggest takeaway and would you recommend that people from guam um venture out to do something like that because i know a lot of people think about it but i know also mm -hmm. it's not easy to do uh what's your experience with all of that and can you share um you know for people who have that in the back of their head is that something worth doing it is definitely worth going to um for one it's a new environment especially if you have never been to the states or to a con like twitchcon mm -hmm. uh two mm -hmm. um you'll learn a lot about different streamers because there's different i would say like what do they call it when they have different streamers like discuss on topics they have those in different rooms oh so like, like a panel or something panels. like panels oh there you go yeah panels they have a variety of panels every day of twitchcon that you could attend wow. like how to get to get into streaming how to increase your viewership like anything to improve your twitch experience or mm -hmm. uh your hobby as a streamer they have those available to you and on the brighter side and plus side of this is you get to meet your favorite streamers nice uh, yes you get, to, mm -hmm, uh, you get to meet maybe uh friends that you made through your stream in twitchcon if you both mm -hmm. plan to go mm -hmm. uh right. to yeah and oh, every twitchcon is always different um there's a lot of events that happen during the three days uh usually i believe it starts at 10 and ends at like 7 p.m wow uh for the three days yeah and uh, on the last day there's always like this secret party that everyone can go to uh it doesn't matter if you're not affiliate you could still go uh affiliate partner a viewer um anything of that sort and it's only exclusive for those who do attend twitchcon and have purchased the ticket or have the badge Oh, and you could get the badge once you uh, purchase the ticket. But I honestly don't regret going to TwitchCon at all. Um, yes, it was difficult because the ticket to yeah. the ticket to travel to the States is very expensive. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Everywhere. and it really is. But if you know, if it's something you want to go to, uh, I suggest you do. You just, you know, put the effort and time into saving the amount of money that you, you'll need. For the ticket and airbnb and etc and for whatever things you want to do mm. uh but i don't regret it at all it's a really great experience i would go back to twitchcon if twitchcon was uh if there was going to be a twitchcon this year and hopefully if there's one next year maybe we could gather all the guamis and go together Oh, yeah, man, that definitely sounds like a, a great idea. <laughs> and I really like, I just really like your perspective of, you know, like the sense of uh, camaraderie and just welcoming like new people, right? Um, and that just brings me to uh, actually kind of like two questions, right? You know, um, is there, can you just like uh, give us like, what do you, what do you, would you feel like you would tell uh, people who want to get into streaming? Like, what are the best practices for them to get started? And uh, also, I think maybe uh, sharing uh, something that you find you found challenging about streaming, like so that they're you know not just all in it for like all the 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 gold and the glory and stuff like that, right? You know, there's also challenges too. So, what are some challenges okay. that you've experienced, right? Like uh, difficult aspects of streaming. Yes. Okay, so um, let's see. The first one I would talk about would be like time management. Mm -hmm. like efficiently and consistently following a schedule uh, because unexpected situations do happen and sometimes it's difficult to avoid and maybe difficult to announce or talk about to uh, your viewers or your community mm -hmm. um so uh if you're starting as a streamer i suggest maybe just uh maybe start streaming for two to three days of the week when, whenever you're free and maybe stream for at least an hour or two to see how you like it. And if you feel comfortable and if it feels too easy for you, then I believe you'd be ready to even stream for longer periods of time, maybe three to five hours a day. And maybe if two to three days isn't enough, then you could move to maybe four days uh -huh. or five days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I guess the second thing I would talk about would be having the right goal in streaming. So like, uh, when you do start, 
your uh, streaming or Twitch experience or journey, uh, you want to grow your community. So you need to build your community first before you even start wanting to build your viewers and followers. Yeah. Uh, because without a strong community, the followers you may have when you do giveaways or whatnot will, you know, might not be there or might be fake. Or when you have a strong community, the viewers will follow because it is your community who will let others know about your program or what you're streaming, right? Right. So you need to move the focus uh, away on the numbers instead and focus on keeping your community active and engaged. Right. Uh, another thing is that that's related to that is also uh, when you make sure that each and every single one of your goal is smart. I know uh, this kind of doesn't only relate to streaming, but it could relate in life in general, I guess. So like what I mean by your goal is smart is that it's specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Uh, so this is one uh, of the best ways to create your goal. So an example could be like trying not to set a goal like I will grow my uh, community. Instead, mm -hmm. set a goal like I will make sure to reply to each comment on my or reply or make a response to all who appear on my chat. Mm -hmm. Or uh, this is more specific and you can actually measure it. It's also achievable and relevant because this is definitely one way to build your community, right? Another point is like stick with what you can control. So when you aim for a goal, choose the ones that you have control over and something that you feel strongly about. Um, when your goal is something that is controllable by yourself, uh, you will not feel hopeless. And when it has meaning for you, uh, you will keep fighting for it. Uh, so what I mean by this is when it is challenging, but is also something that can be done, you will keep moving forward to make things happen. And you also need to make sure that for your goal, you always have both short-term and long-term goals. And examples of these could be a short-term goal is stream 10 streams in one month. And oh. then a long-term goal could be like become a Twitch affiliate. Right. And yeah. Um, and I guess another point that I have is choosing something you love, but is also sustainable. So this also revolves around building your community, right? So when you choose a theme for your stream, choose something that is more of your niche rather than choosing something that is popular. Uh, this is something that a lot of streamers who are just beginning do to get the views. Uh, instead of focusing on the views, focus on creating your image or your persona or your brand. <clears throat> um, it's also good to not focus on the numbers. I pre previously said that as well. I highly emphasize this because for the most part, a lot of us do, and it's somewhat a habit, right? But try to refrain from that. The numbers may not come right away, but what's good about a niche market is that there are other people out there who are into what you're into, and they will start coming if you just focus on creating content for your niche. This is why choosing something that you love matters. Uh, however, if you love something really obscure or something that is kind of unknown to a lot of people, it may not be sustainable to so strike a balance between the two. Mm. And that's what I have for building your community or growing it. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I do have others. Okay. Uh, another one is Twitch chat. Twitch chat. So learning how to read and respond to chat. Sometimes chat is so versatile, you're, you are unable to fully digest what they mean. Like what I mean mm -hmm. by this is, especially if, um, you're playing like a very inclusive game or you're really into the game and you have to put your attention more into the game, it's kind of hard to look at chat and try, and, and try not to mess up in your game. So that is why you need to be able to talk to your viewers as if they're actually your friends or your family and tell them, hey guys, uh, I won't be able to look at chat right now. I'm doing something real quick, but I'll respond as soon as I can. So with that being said, uh, you should be responsive to your chat uh, being able to talk to yourself also helps and to others. Sometimes uh, you'll have streams where no one is talking or chatting. So you'll have to learn how to have a conversation with just yourself or learning how to converse to open up your chat for more discussion. Okay. Um, and other points are like uh, receiving criticism. 
and how maybe streaming might be mentally straining. Yeah. Uh, so receiving criticism from other people and how to handle it because everyone is different in coping uh, with this. So this can be difficult, especially if you don't have the right support. Uh, so like negative criticism, some people can't handle it and might break down. So again, it's important to have the right support system, such as a close friend, uh, family me members, relatives, uh, and whoever else. And also, it could be mentally straining um, if you do not have the, the right mentality. Uh, what I mean by this is if you can't control your emotions in a positive way, then your negative emotions will eat you up and yeah. definitely show on stream, which is something you might not want to show uh, to your viewers. So I have tips for this, but do you guys want to add in anything? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No like worries. You're doing, a, you're doing a, I think we got the ball. I think we got you rolling on like. Yeah. Um, well, um, <laughs> yeah. So it was, um, it's uh, definitely uh, really great to hear. Like, I mean, like I, you, you sound like, um, you know, it really does. Uh, show how seasoned you are, right? With giving all this type of feedback and all these tips, right? To help uh, all of us. Uh, I know most has a question for you. Uh, take it away, most. Um, is this the uh, the lead question? Oh, or is this a different question? <laughs> Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. No worries. No worries. Uh, I think we were going to go along the lines of like uh, mental health because she was, you know, oh, talking I'm sorry. about okay. it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm so sorry about that. I, 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 I missed it. Yeah. Dre, I'm so sorry. Um, no worries. You know, You're good. Uh, it, is a, it is a mental health. Last month was Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, so it was a good time when we had AB on the podcast to talk about the mental state of being um, a streamer. Um, you touched up, uh, you touched upon it a little bit, but um, uh, if you can elaborate a little bit on on the mental um aspect of streaming, um, how much does it take a toll on you? How often do you need break from it? And I guess what are some of the things you need to do to handle the mental state of streaming? As far as like, um, like you you said, you know, sometimes you can have a bad day or a bad time, and you don't want to bring that to the stream. Um, how do you adjust to all of that? So, like, for example, if I'm having a bad day and it's a day where I, I schedule to stream, I would like to, like, reflect on, like, why I'm thinking this way and how I have to remind myself how streaming is what makes me happy and makes me relieve all my stresses. So just changing your, your perspective does a lot. Um, also, surrounding yourself with positive people help your mindset as well. So I'm really thankful for um, my community, my chat, my friends, my family, everyone who has been supporting me so far. I'm really grateful for them because if it if they weren't in my chat or you know talking to me as much, then obviously I'm gonna be going through some mental strain as well. Mm -hmm. But you just have to remind yourself that uh, remind why you're streaming um, and just surround your yourself with positive people and mm -hmm. sometimes um negative vibes are unavoidable un unavoidable so it's it really just starts with how you think of your situation and the situation at hand and i think just by uh changing your again your perspective it will mm -hmm. do a lot for yourself <clears throat> has it happened where you are having a bad day and the stream has um I guess lifted you up, has put you in a better mood. Have you, ha have you had to rely on streaming to help you through some tough mental issues, or uh, has streaming brought you more of the stress than than you thought, or, or has streaming been a, a much more positive for you? Streaming has lifted me up in so many ways, especially when I I first started streaming before I had my you know fancy PC or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Just talking to people and knowing that there's people out there that are willing to listen to me or even enjoy my content, it makes me realize that I have more self-worth. I should have more self-worth in what I do. Uh, because back then, I, I wouldn't say I was the brightest type of person. I, I did have, like everyone else, I did have my, my lows. And streaming was one way of helping me 
uh, get back to my, my normal self. And it helped me a lot to realize that the time is short and just enjoy and surround yourself with people that make you happy. Um, that's basically it. Well, if it's worth anything, I'm, I'm sure I can speak on behalf of ARC and a lot of people that come into your community. Um, we never once can ever pick up a bad vibe. I think you do a really good job at keeping the positivity really high. Uh, you're also very entertaining, which plays a, a big factor in it. So, um, it's, you know, it's good to know that, uh, that at, at the end of it, um, you, you enjoy it and you, you show that you enjoy it, which I, you know, I think it's a big reason why a lot of people are always around um, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to catch Drea on a bad day, at least for your stream. So um, from, our, from our viewership end, uh, you're doing a great job at, at keeping up the, uh, the energy and stuff. So um, Thank you. kudos, to you. <laughs> kudos Thank you. to you for that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so we actually reached at least the mid portion of the, of the podcast. So I'm just going to be dropping a quick advertisement really quick uh, or like a quick commercial if you could say so uh, as uh, as you all know the laddie esports league is actually hosting a league of legends tournament uh it is now costing only 50 dollars for sign up but if you are affiliated with a school as in all of the members from your team are affiliated with a school and you're representing the school you can enter for free so uh free. that's right for free <laughs> so contrary to our last uh our last podcast uh un unfortunately the jerseys will not be provided however you can still purchase a jersey for 25 dollars each right so if you still want to rep your team look good and you know s sign up with your six players right uh it'll just cost 50 for the team and it'll cost uh, $25 for the jersey. So I, I would say that's a pretty good deal. Uh, signups, uh, last day for signups is the 24th of October. And we start the league on the 31st. So be sure to start signing up. I'm actually excited for that. Uh, Dre, are you, are you actually joining that? Because I know that we're talking about league and stuff. Um, so I'm wondering if you're going to be part of a team. Yes, I am part of the UOG team as the support player. Nice, nice. He's nice. All right, I can't wait to get my Drea Kupo jersey then. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. Need an autograph though. <laughs> no problem, I'll sign it. There, there, Sorry. there. You guys go right. So, so if you guys want a jer jersey signed by Drea Kupo, be sure to check her out. <laughs> but uh, but getting back uh, getting back into it, just uh, going back into the podcast just a little bit. Uh, man, that was that was pretty fun. So, uh, <laughs> in right, in so, uh, you you know, we we touched a little bit about um, you know, we touched we touched a little bit about TwitchCon, um, and you know, it would be really nice if uh, if you were able to go back again, and it would be great for like the community to go back again, um, but yeah. Uh, since since we since we already know we are in this pandemic, I just wanted to know like how has you know COVID like affected your life and how has like gaming and streaming kind of helped you cope with these changes? Like, is it a positive or a negative kind of thing? Like, how how are you handling that? Okay, well, when when the pandemic started, uh, I had to stop working on at my I guess my workplace. And now I work t uh, at home, and there's that. And also, it affected my life generally because usually I'd like to go to the gym at least uh, three times a week. But now that I think they're open again, but I don't want to risk going. But I know they closed yeah, it down for same. some time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and with this pandemic, I just did a lot of self reflection. Uh, wanting just to make sure I eat healthy because in the beginning of the pandemic I was just splurged on eating fried chicken and pizza and cheese because I love those things but I stopped <laughs> eating those things because I realized my whenever I woke up from you know sleeping I'd feel like crap so I'm like oh I gotta do something to change how I feel mm. when I wake up so I started with my diet and then just listening to music and uh Trying to spend time with my loved ones through like 
Discord calls or even WhatsApp calls or what's it called, FaceTime. And streaming was and is my way to combat the negative thoughts that I had during this pandemic. Or I still, I do have them sometimes, but they aren't as frequent as before. Mm. But streaming is definitely the platform that helped me or helps me com combat them and overall allows me to express myself in a positive light. So the community, friends, family, and viewers have played a humongous role in my emotional health. And so far, it's been only for the positive and the better. And now as I grow, it turned into a way to encourage, encourage others to stream, especially during this chaotic time, right? I feel like most people who started streaming recently, uh, mean it's the main or the main cause was because of the pandemic, you know, they're at home, they're playing right. games and, you know, why not try streaming? So right. I'm glad they took the opportunity to try it out and hopefully they stick to it. And I hope we all continue to support them. Um, and other than streaming, I do try to exercise and I do write daily on my Twitter if that helps. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you follow, if you follow Andrea uh, on Twitter, you definitely are getting a, a heavy dose of good memes and good content <laughs> there as well as, as her streams. So, heck uh, yeah. You know, plug, plug the Drea Kupo Twitter. But, right. uh, Drea, I, <laughs> uh, Drea, I wanted to I transition into this because you brought up a, a very. Um, good point about people being home and covid canceling a lot of stuff so it's affected a lot of people yeah. mentally uh, covid has affected a lot of things outside of you know just just the daily operation your, your daily operations have changed because of covid um and one of the big things is that um there are no sports being played um there can't be physical sports being played so uh people a lot of people have been hungry for competitive content and I think that the Laddie Esports League is doing a really great job at um, giving the people content, uh, even if it is competitive gaming, well, esports is on the rise, right? But um, it has given people a, a competitive scene. Um, and you are part of a team, like you said, you're going to be playing with UOG. Um, I wanted to talk about that because uh, for for someone in, in your position, um, you know, what does it mean to you to just, first of all, to be part of a, a, a organization like the yoji tritons uh, esports team um and uh just yeah if you can just reflect on that okay well i'm really surprised i made it to the team to be honest but i am very happy and i'm proud that i'm representing yoji especially in esports and in league of legends uh, a game that i love so much um and i'm happy and just to show that people from Guam are able to reach these opportunities to be involved in an esports team, to be mm -hmm. able to compete in these competitions. Yeah. And hopefully, um, with these competitions, uh, Lavi Esports gains more light onto their, what they're doing. I believe they really deserve more exposure from the outsiders, right? Out people outside of Guam. And yeah. I I do wish to be more involved with that esports one day. Mm -hmm. I I I want I would like to help them more in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so also, uh, I wanted to dive into uh, just a little bit about you, OG team, because that is uh, kind of a big deal. Um, and you're also uh, the first female we have on the podcast. So I wanted to ask this because it's kind of a stigma, not just on Guam. It's a stigma all around the world. A lot of people don't really have respect for girl gamers in a sense where, you know, gaming is considered a, a male dominated thing. But yeah. um, you, you and a lot of other females are proving that, hey, you know, we, we have a lot of talent, too. Um, can you talk to me about the stigma of just being a girl on a esports team like UOG and and what, what that does to you or with maybe some of the criticism you might have faced or maybe some of the, the I guess, even the highs or the positives? Uh, take me through just being a girl in this setting that's kind of like i said a little bit unusual for most people to cope with that girls actually play video games and are good at it okay well for my personal experience uh being on the yoji team for almost i think about a month now mm -hmm. i honestly haven't experienced anything difficult or challenging because of being a female but i I, I think I could answer maybe like how challenging it is to be a female in like an online environment. Oh yeah, okay. like uh, even I want to definitely also hear that perspective like, you know, how has that been for you like on Twitch? Like 
you know, okay, and so like, being a female streamer. Mm -hmm. So like, no cap, it's difficult. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> of course, so, of course. Like, uh, so there's like two perspectives like a female can try to choose to follow, right? So one perspective could be always going, like knowing that there's always going to be criticism. So mm -hmm. you should acknowledge it and you have to understand like this, this side of the online environment, it's always going to be a male dominated field or mm -hmm. you sh uh, follow the second perspective, which is uh, where you refuse it, you don't feed into it and you encourage an environment where you don't promote the negative behavior. It actually sucks because I could understand why guys have an easier time relating to guys and girls yeah. to girls. So mm -hmm. if a community is male dominated, obviously there's bound to be biases, but I hope slowly and surely in this day and age, we can learn to be both fair and empathetic towards each other and to have to others regardless of this. So I think just choosing a perspective will allow a female to go through it um, smoothly and not, you wouldn't have to worry so much about what everyone is saying about being a female. Because uh, I have seen some female streamers post about their experiences with other male gamers or male streamers. Um, because I am still in this Facebook group called um, Twitch, Twitch streamers, I believe on Facebook. Yes, that's what mm -hmm. it's called. Uh, there was one uh, female that posted about her experience. You know, she stated that she's not a big streamer. She just started, so she has around three or four viewers. Uh, mm -hmm. So she's just trying to promote her stream in a league game. And she posted her Twitch link, uh, I guess, at the end screen of her game. And mm -hmm. rude, rude male viewers came by her stream saying she was unattractive or saying oh, that man. she could show this or this mm -hmm. and i felt so oh, bad right. and you know the best thing to do is just don't feed into them i mean like what i mean by that is don't feed into the negativity and just ignore it uh and just look at the positive of what you're doing right yeah. and yeah i agree and also guys if for any males out there who are um putting Drea's skills into question. Um, I've seen her play. Uh, she can beat you, your brother, and your best friends. In oh, league, so damn. Don't even, try it. <laughs> don't even try it. I've seen it. There you I've go. <laughs> there you go. And uh, and we, we really, have, we do really appreciate that type of feedback because, you know, um, there, there may be some, you know, uh, some, some girls out there, some females out there who might want to get into streaming, but are afraid of that type of like, you know, that, that type of, uh, confrontation, right. Or conflicts that may, may occur. So I really do feel like, you know, what you say is really, uh, can be very influential and inspiring. Um, so, uh, we're actually going to be, uh, we're actually at the tail end of the podcast. So, uh, I want to actually, uh, uh, Check in with most. Most, do you have any final questions for uh for Drea? Um, no, not at the top of my head. I think Drea did a good job at elaborating on the topics we did give her. Uh, she went into full detail, even gave us some lore. Yeah. So that was so, that was great. Some Final Fantasy lore for all you Final Fantasy heads. I hope you appreciated that little spill she had about Final Fantasy Nine. That was great. Um, yeah, I, I I think Drea killed it today on the podcast. Uh, got a lot of good info. So I'm I'm good. Okay, so then that means that we're just going to be ending it with the final question that we will always ask all of our <laughs> participants. <laughs> Would you like to stream as a career? Why or why not? Do you really want my answer for this? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the drum roll right now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Are we getting the... Okay. Oh, sorry. I dropped my career right now in a heartbeat. Oh, if I could, okay. honestly, mm -hmm. I would. I love streaming so much. I would do it every day if I could. I just feel like I haven't been streaming so much because of my work and school. So, mm -hmm. but if I were to, if I were able to full time stream and just drop everything, I would. Wow. No cap. No cap. Right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, you definitely provide a lot better content than I know that people that do it full time. So yeah, I mean, you got a lot of things going for you wow. in that regards. 
honestly i i know i know a lot of i know a lot of partnered and people that do it for a long time i can't be in their uh their their channel for more than five ten minutes without feeling you know like it's just i don't know i i think that you provide uh top quality content because you provide a lot of range i guess you do cooking stuff you do cosplay stuff you do you're good at the games you play so i mean i if you were to ask me i would say that's in your cards i would if you were to tell me that you were going to do that full time, I believe you could do it. And I'm pretty sure I speak for a lot of people. I know I'm speaking, I'm speaking for myself, but I'm no one speaking <laughs> for a lot of people when I say that, you know, I, I, I do truly believe that, uh, that you do have the, the personality and the charisma and the attitude for it. So, you know, uh, it, I hope that's something that you can achieve. I, I really do. Right. And Thank I, you so much. It and means I, a lot, you guys. Yeah. I feel the same. <laughs> Honestly, I really do. Like I, I am expecting at least like, if it's not, uh, I mean, I think there's probably some handful of people, but uh, on the top of my head, you're probably like the first person that I can imagine who would reach partner, right? So, um, I agree. Yeah. 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 So, so from from our island to 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 just represent us as well. So, I'm really uh, we're really, we're really looking forward to that uh, moment, uh, Andrea. Thank you for coming on to the podcast. It was. It was really great to, you know, share some of those uh, wonderful insights that you've provided for not just us, but for the community at large. And and remember, guys, she's willing to drop her job. So be sure to get onto <laughs> that stream. Drea, can you just yeah. plug your stream right now? Uh, tell us what it is so that we give us your... Uh, D-R-E-A-K-U-P-O-J-A-K-U-P-O. Let's go. Nice. And, and, and that's, a, that's a shout out to the sponsors as well. Anyone who wants to sponsor the Drea Kupo channel, <laughs> she's also uh, taking... Um, Drea, what's your business email? Uh, what can they reach you at? What's your, <laughs> what, what, what are your, your socials? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, joking, uh, I'm, joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. At gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, sponsors. Uh, line up. Line up. Okay. Uh, any Thanks other you any other socials that you want to drop uh, before we end, uh, Drea? Uh, follow Twitch.tv Guns Toy. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh, A lot of shout outs. There we go to the local community. So much. <laughs> so great. Awesome. And uh, 